Hi everybody, welcome to my latest YouTube video. This one's a pipe video, yay! Uh, I've been load, doing a load of other stuff lately, so I thought I'd get a pipe video in. This one's a really important one, this is about buy indication. Buy indication's the um, number one reason why pike are deep hooked. I've seen loads of pictures, loads of videos of pike with, with traces out coming out of the throat and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm, I've, I hate to say this, but if you, that's happened to you a lot, it's your own fault. Because your bite indication is nowhere good enough. So what I thought I'd do, I've looked, looked at loads of videos on YouTube and I haven't actually seen this one covered. It's not properly, I don't know, I think it's properly. So what I've done, I've gone back to basics. I've gone to show you the full setup I use for a ledger and it's on, on a still water. So it's ledger fishing from a still water using rear drop off alarms. Uh, and I'm really lucky in this video because Paul Orsop from Billy's Bite Bite has sent me a pair of alarms to give away as part of a competition. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of the competition right at the end of the video so make sure you watch it all to get to end. Right, so what you're going to see, you're going to see me setting up my rods, Drew setting up his rods, Ryan setting up his rods, um, showing how to cast out, how to set your rods up, how to set your alarms up, front bike, uh, front bite alarms, rear bite alarms, drop offs, you name it. And there's also a little bit of footage on there of Ryan unhooking his first pike. It was a pike at Drew Court, but nonetheless, we've got Ryan in there. It's his first time ever handling a pike. So, what better time and what better place to catch it on camera and show you how I would generally show people how to unhook a pike? Basic stuff, I know, but it's stuff that's not covered in every single video. There's bits and bats of it. Um, it's a video that, like I say, it, I did it in one take in one day. So I hope I've got it all on there, but I think there's going to be some quite a few talking points afterwards and there's going to be quite a few people looking at their own setups and thinking, am I doing this right, am I doing this wrong, is this something I do to improve? And I think if this video saves one pike's life, just one single pike's life, it's worth getting into grief with my wife about making videos all the time and going out recording. So anyway, I'll get back to straight into the footage, uh, you're going to see me now um, going through my stuff, looking gear and stuff. Enjoy it, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Tight lines. Right, so it's okay having all your rods out and stuff like that, but most important thing to do before you put your rods out is to make sure your unhooking gear's there. So what you need, a big mat, and I mean a big mat as well, you don't want a little tiny baby one, you'd, you'd have to catch a decent sized pike. So you need something with plenty of cushioning, and you want it right between all your rods, so you're not you're not moving it around a lot. Side cutters, if you're getting a deep box, forceps, these are the ones I use for my lures, but they're absolutely fine for using for, um, for dead bait trace and stuff like that. And the first thing you ever do is put your net up. Because it's amazing how many times you'll put your net up, cast the rod out, 10 seconds later your rod screams away, your net's not set up. Big mistake, I see that so many times, it's a mistake you don't want to make. Make sure your net's your first thing up before you do anything else. Make sure your looking gear's all ready. It's all close together, scales are in there, waistlings in there, everything's set up. Don't miss about. Make sure that all your stuff's there, ready for you when you get a fish. Right, everybody, I'm just going to go through my actual setup I use for dead baiting off of the bank. So, these are my rods. These are actually boat rods. These are 10 foot six, three and a half pound test curve, uh, made by Cotswold Rods. Beautiful rods, all American tackled blanks in what they call stealth mode. All American tackled guides, obviously. Also, they've got my name on them which you can't beat a bit of blink can you then what we've got we've got 65 pound braid again all american tackle to a run rig now this is a large bore run rig if you can see that's a really large bore run rig i always prefer these for bait fishing i use these when i'm on boat when i'm float fishing on boat but i also use them for run rigs you can see the size of that i've also got a large 10 mil rubber bead there like a buffer bead that goes up what you'll note there that's my float stop, so when I set it back up for float fishing, so I just push it up into there, keeps it all nice and tight. Little quick link there, and then you've got a 21 inch trace, 35 pound line, and then you've got two size four trebles, and that's perfect. I always like to set my trebles when I'm making my own trebles to be around a fist. See how sticky sharp they are. So in other words, I like to have one point on outside, like that. So about a fist apart, I think that's perfect for all bait. That fits similarly works for smell, sardine, herring, uh, mackerel, all that sort of thing. What I'll do now, I'll put your bait on. It's 
been that a couple of times today already this bait but i'll just show you what i do now sardines you can bury hooks in sardines but you can't really do it on these things these are terrible for um being really really tough especially a bigger fish if the little tiny joey is mackerel they're not too bad but these big old things they're a nightmare so what i tend to do is put the hook point in and bring it out again other side so it actually comes through so it's actually nicked on like that like that exactly the same with this one these are semi-barbed ducks i'm gonna find the one with the point on and then i'll just drop that in the side again in and out again skin so it's actually only held on by its skin but it's it's still super super tough and then i'll show you a little tip what generally happens when you cast a bait out especially when you've got a big lead on these are actually four ounce lead i prefer bigger leads bigger the lead the better for me and there's a reason for that yeah, if, if a pike goes away from you, you get a good solid run. If a pike comes towards you, you still get a good solid run because it's such a heavy weight, it still actually pulls off. So as it's coming back towards you, it'll actually pull your line off so you don't generally get many drop backs. If you're using two ounce drills, you're using two ounce, it's absolutely fine. But what drill will get, it'll get more drop backs than I'll actually get. All my runs are generally straight runs, I don't usually get drop backs. So um, what I'll do, I'll show you a little trick. What I've got, I've got some PVA string. And what I do with it, get a bit off like that. And what I do, I wrap it around here. What this stops happening is when you cast out your lead and your bait trying to se separate, so they want to come apart. So what I tend to do is wrap some PVA string around it quite a few times. And what it does, it holds it in place. So when I cast it out, it all lands together, all nice and tidy. And then this string goes in seconds. It just literally disintegrates. In fact, it's happening in my fingers now. Wrap it around a load of times. Don't have to be too neat. What it'll do, it'll keep that lead and that bait together like that. And then as soon as it hits bottom, it'll disappear. What I'll do now, I'll cast out, but what I like to do, I like to keep everything in a perfect line. So at the moment, my back arm and front arm are facing over there towards that boy. So what I'll do, I'll try and cast towards there. It doesn't have to be perfect, because what you can do, you can always adjust it afterwards. So I'll just do a quick cast. Stand right in between the alarms. Bring it back. Feel it to bottom, see if it's not tipped up there. Feel it on bottom, so it's nice and solid, all there. It's all staying in the same position. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk forward, I'm going to put my bait runner on. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my bait runner on and walk it backwards. So it's set quite light, and I'm going to drop it in like that. As you know, at the front, I've got Delkims. There you go, EV Delkims set on maximum sensitivity so anything anything goes on these i'll turn these on in a minute and you can see you can see how sensitive they are um although i'm using a rear drop off alarm i really like having front alarms as well it's just an extra bit of indication any indication is good you know it's always it's all about indication pike are killed pike are deep hooked from bad 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 indication no more than that you can't blame anything you can't blame a pike if, if you don't have your indication right then it's your fault nobody else's you can't blame it on a pike eating it too quick and moving away not taking notice it's your fault if you deep the pike it's your fault and it's from bad indication the reason i've done this video is to try and stop this happening so what i'm going to do now i'm going to do my rear drop off alarms these are billy's backbiters which i still class as the best alarm at marketplace uh, these are available from paul also and the bonus is during this maker's video paul's given me a pair of these to give away as a competition for a prize in a competition so what i want to do i'll do a little bit of the thing later on and you'll see how we can win that so these are paul's top at range ones and what i'm going to do i'm just going to turn them on and show you what happens right so that's that's actually on now it's going to be quite noisy so i'll just let you know what basically is in here is like a little rocker switch so you've actually i'll turn it right i'll turn him down actually that might be too, not be too bad that's not too bad so what you've got you've got like a little rocker in here you can see it there just it rocks on it 
what you want to do, you want to put your alarm in there when it's all perfectly rocked. And then what happens if a fish pulls away and drops off, sets the alarm off. These go really high as well, I'll let you listen to it, really high. So you can hear it well away, turn it down. And then what happens if the fish starts pulling towards you and starts on the take, again, you get another audible alarm. Fantastic alarms, I love these alarms. There's also a jack point in bottom as well if you want to do an ATTX. Turn it down a little bit. Like that. Turn it off. Right, I'll show you how to set them up now. I'm gonna go around that side drill. Right, I see these things set up wrong so many times. Not only these, but also normal drop back alarms. What you don't want, you don't want that. You don't want that. I see them um, set like that and like that. What you want to do, you want to make your make your um, clip as close to your spool as possible, which means it needs so little to actually pull it off, pull it off of there. That's exactly what you want. So I'm going to try and set it up that way. What you need to do, it's nice and tart. You can feel, you can see it there. It's all nice and tart rod. What you need to do is open your bail arm, bring your clip up here. Now it's on, and what I'm doing as well, I'm moving that lead forward because I'm casting. I've, so I'm only casting out there about. I don't know, about 40 yards, but I want as much weight forward there as possible. Right, and then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna bring up my bait runner, I'm gonna turn the alarm on. And now, if you're coming out back of here, Drew, you should see how tight it is to there. See how that is there? See how close it is? Well, you're about a centimetre away from that. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn the alarms on I'm going to replicate two, two different takes. I'll turn it up. Right, so both alarms are now on. I'm not mistaken. So both alarms are on now. And what you've got, you've got a fish and it's actually gonna to come towards you. Now, like I say, it doesn't generally happen on such big on such big leads like I use, it doesn't usually happen, you generally get runs. But what I'll do is I'll try and replicate a fish moving towards you. So as it comes towards you, you load it on the front alarm. And you've got it there. So literally, when it gets to down to there, you're gonna get alarm from there and alarm from there. Then what generally happens on, on a drop back you, it'll come back up again. I'll wind this back up here. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do an actual physical run. So your pike's got your bait, it's moving away from you, and what it's gonna do, it's gonna pull the line off, boom. There you go. Now your line's peeling off, you pick up your rod, close your bail arm, and hit it. Turn that down, didn't that hit it. It's slightly annoying. And that's it, that's as basic as it gets. You don't need anything else than that. You don't have to use them on the run rig. You can also use them with alarms. You don't have to use them if you're on a still water. You can use them on canals. You can use them uh, on boats. Some lads use them on the back of boats for Xander. Fantastic alarm. And like I say, there'll be two available in the competition. Another thing that's not talked about a lot when, when you look at stuff like this, when you're talking about a bait presentation, if you look down that rod in a perfect line, straight down the rod, is perfectly in a line where my line comes off my tip and goes straight out to bait. Angles are a bad thing on, on any, any sort of pike fishing. And I've just noticed, I've just set this one up over here. If you want to come over here, Drew. I've set this one up incorrectly to show you what you really don't want. The reason is, any angles cause friction and friction is not what you want. Resistance is not a good thing. So if you look at that one there, it's veering off to the left-hand side. Now, it's not a long way. A lot of people won't be right bothered about it, but trust me, that will annoy the hell out of me. But what I've done, I've set it like that just so you can see that it's off to one side. So what you're doing, you're causing a friction point on the inside of that eye. That's not what you want. You want everything to be perfectly level. So in other words, if you're fishing in deep water, just in front of you, in other words, if I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bring this one in. Bring this one in now. Right, so just put another couple of things here as well. This is just like a little pop-up setup just to keep them off bottom. It's just a little bit different. I'll drop, I'll drop it margin, you should be able to see it. Can you see from there, Drew? Impressive, isn't it? There you go. 
just off the bottom. Just a little bit, something a little bit different. So, what I don't want to do is have this bait now right over there, which you see on a regular basis, just chucked out onto your lines like that. And big bag angles like that. You don't want them angles. Those angles are not good. Those angles are not good. You see it a lot? Another thing I see a lot of, slack lines. Slack lines are deadly. The amount of times I've been on, I see people where I've been bait fishing and I've walked around banks and you see people with slack lines coming off the end of the rods, they need to be pin taut. Literally touching that line should be enough. If you see, when they're really, really like that, I can actually move that quite a long way, not set alarm off. If you go for that one over there now and do the same, you will set that alarm off straight away because it's, it's all taut, everything's tension. Slack lines, no good, no good whatsoever. We are using braid, 65 pound braid, so you're getting a lot of feel uh, when, when you get anything happening out there in water. But God's sake, do not have slack lines coming off any of your rods. It's no good. It's okay for carp fishing, no good for pike fishing. Have a look at what I've done now. What I've done, I've actually set a rod up on the bank, so it's not in water. But what I want to show you, I want to show you. Now, these are top-end Delkins. These are absolutely set up at maximum sensitivity. I'm going to show you how much a bait can move around if you haven't got if you've got your setup completely wrong. At the moment this is pin taut, so you've got a, you've got a four ounce lead on the bottom there and you've got a bait there. So like I said it's only on a bait runner so there's no drop back alarm. I'll show you how how sensitive how sensitive a piece it is. Does that way a bit take that way that way, back towards you. Right, so when I said you don't get drop backs on, on, four, on four ounce leads, you just don't get that. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to swap that for a much smaller lead and show you the difference between that. The fact that right, right, so what we've done now, we've changed. What we've done, we've put an ounce and a half lead on. Now, I see small leads being used a lot by people. It's not unusual to use people, people to use small leads. I'm going to show you one of the problems with small leads. Now, what I'll do, I'll just do it by hand now, but then what I'll do is I'll put it on a rear drop-back alarm and you'll see why you get drop runs, uh, why you get drop-back runs. See the lack of sensitivity there? That fish can move all around here without setting that alarm off, it can go here. That's not a couple of beeps. It's not enough. Look how that rod tip's bang, bouncing around now. Only way you're going to get any indication on that is that pipe moves directly away from you. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. You need to have a bigger lead. Three ounce, I generally go for two ounce minimum close distance, four ounce at any sort of distance. Like so, you can move that around. Minimum selectivity. What we'll do now, I'll put the drop back alarm on and I'll show you what it'll look like. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to replicate a drop, uh, a drop back take. So I'm going to go and pick that small lead up and I'm going to move towards you. And I'm going to show you what it'll do on there. Just shows why sensitivity, size of your lead's really, really important. Not only that, but look how close that lead is to that bait. If your lead's back here, if your lead's back there, well, they don't, they don't land together on bottom. If you don't wind down as soon as it is what bottom. Look how far a pike can move without well, setting the alarm off. That's a long way. That's far too long. That's far too big a distance covered without registering a take. You might be lucky, it might go straight away from you. But amount of times, I see people cast the lead out, lead comes right back up line, doesn't land near bait, they put it on alarm and that's set the fight. That's why it's really important what you do as soon as you get, as soon as you get out there, 
and as your life comes all the way back. It's there, as soon as someone picks it up. Sets off straight away. Perfect, perfect presentation. Three to four ounce leads, perfect, good job. Ounce and a half, not enough. Yeah, well done. That's it, mate. Perfect. Just put your alarm on. Lift up. So, Drew's got a nice, fresh, frozen sardine here. It's just going to show up placement. One rooted tail. Perfect. And then one. These are semi barbed, so obviously, it's got lead. you need your barbed point in the bait. One in there. That's nice. That's all set up now. Have you noticed as well that? Up is no more than halfway up bait. I personally prefer to just nip the heads off now and let a bit of gunge out, but Drew's gonna go for a full on, aren't you? Yeah. That's nice, that. It's an, just over an 18 inch trace there. Uh, 21 inch. 21 inch. Yeah, nice, nice up there. I'll just zoom out a little bit. It's nice, that. Ready to uh, chuck it to try and keep this one warm. <laughs> <laughs> see if this one ends up. Try get this one. See on. if this one ends up further out than four foot. <laughs> Just step back to see he's a bit of a playboy when it comes to casting. There you go. Nice. Nice tight line now. Drew's on on braid. So should be able to get nice and tight to his lead. A bit of a bow there, isn't it? It's just bloody wind straight across the swim. That should do the job. So he's just turned his alarms off so it doesn't annoy it alarms when he set it all up. That's the right way to do it. Pull it off the alarm. Off a bait runner so you're not dragging your bait and all weed on bottom. Needs a fox drop off alarms. Weighted as well. It's only got a fairly small lead. He's only on two ounce lead. We're not fishing particular long distance. So if you notice, he's got his weight well forward. Obviously, if you're using heavy leads closing, you don't really need to do that. What he's going to do now, he's going to open his bail arm and these are on a line clip system, which is okay, although I've felt it's let them down a little bit over here as the spring is in here, comes, comes out and goes rusty and stuff like that. So now he's opening the bail arm. Have you noticed as well as keeping this, it's keeping this as level as possible, which is really important. You can do it off a bait run, you can just wrap it around yourself. Obviously you want it as level as possible, so anything takes, goes forward and pulls line clip open. Anything coming towards you, drops it down. That's it. All I'm going to do now is turn the alarm on the front. That's it. Perfect. There you go, straight off.
for the summer taking. That's a fish. That's a fish. Well done, son. That would definitely take. See it happening. Do not forget, we've got leaky wellies. Pike is Pike. Yes. Pike is Pike. Right, best thing to do now, lift it up and grab the front of the neck. Take it all the way back to the lucky man. Sorry, right, don't worry. Within. Don't worry. Fine specimen. Pike, Aesox Lucius. Right, so what you've got to be careful of, as you can see, he's un unattached his trace, dead important. Right, you can see a hook there stuck in there. So what you need to do, right, the only way to pick these fish up is put your hand out like that. You've got to put your fingers under that gill raker there. Right, I can see the hook, and I'm going to put my thumb on this membrane here, across it, yeah. like that. Right. And I'm actually gonna, not going to use, hopefully, any force. I should be able to get this out of my fingers. Like that. Right. So, hooks are away from the fish now. So, what we'll do is move it out of way. I'll let the fish. I'm going to lie the fish down here. Right, come down here. Right. So, what you're going to do, you're going to put your fingers like that, just underneath there. And you're going to put your fingers under there. Put your thumb on there. Yeah. Okay? Size, With this hand. That, that's it, that's on there. Nice. No, 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 no. Slide along, feel it. Yeah. Right, bring it across there. Put your thumb across there. Yeah. Feel it, a good hold. You can feel it, it's strong. Lift it up. Do not let go. What do you think? What you need to do now is get this hand. Oh, Under there. There you go. Keep hold of it nice and steady. That's as simple as that for a nook in a pike. And then light back down again now. The bite? Yeah. So just one more time. Just one more time. One more time. It's a big fish. You can straddle it. You can get up the top of it like this. You put your fingers in there. You see these gill rakers here. Don't put any room. That's what causes the damage. See them? That's what cuts you back of those. So you can see, you might put your fingers in. In there. Put your finger on the membrane. You can lift it up and you can get inside. Messing around with all its teeth and stuff. And that's it. Now we'll go drop it back down at margins. I'm gonna do it, Drew. Got it? There it goes. Perfect. Right, everybody, that's it. That's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's It's been really interesting one to make. I've always wanted to make a video about bite indication. I've just never got around to doing it. So we're a perfect opportunity to do it. Rivers were all, all out of condition, so I thought I'll go on a still water. Ryan wanted to go pike fishing for the first time. I'll take him down to still water. I'll get this bite identification video done, and it got them both out of way on the same day. 
like I said, we're all done in one day, all the recording we're done in one day, so I hope I covered everything I needed to do. I think there's a lot of stuff in there about um, size of your weights that you're using, how a drop back starts and how uh, a take starts, and how far away a lead is from your bait and the differences that makes. And I hope it just made uh, a difference to somebody. If somebody looks at indication and things, maybe I'm not using big enough lead, maybe I'm not tightening to a bait enough, that's why my indication isn't great, that's why I'm deep hooking fish. Um, I think it'd be well worth doing just one fish for the save one single fish from this video then I think I've got it right so the second part of this is that there's a competition uh, when I mentioned it to Paul about doing doing a video like this he said to me he said straight away because I'll tell you what I'll do I'll give you a pair of Billy's Bad Biters to give away as competition prize and I thought well fantastic there's no better time of doing it it gets interest up and like I say the, the alarms are fantastic um, Paul also can be contacted at any time. I'll put a link down there if you were do if you are lucky enough to win these. They are seventy five to eighty quid each, so they're not cheap. But I will tell you what, you get what you pay for in alarms. You always do. I love my Delkin front alarms and Billy's back bites are back. I don't think there's a better indication method unless you maybe I don't know a really good floor setup. But I, I personally prefer alarms. So what I'm going to do, I've thought about I'm going to give this away, do I give it away to the biggest fish, to have a competition on bank on all in one day, and I thought, no, it's, it's really messy, and I thought I need to spread word about this video. So the most important thing is you like and share this video to your friends, simple as that, you like and share that. But what I want people to do is to subscribe to the channel. So like and share the video, and share the video away. And then what I want you to do, I want you to subscribe to the channel. If you're not a subscriber already, I need you to subscribe. And then what I want you to do, I just want you to go onto your phone, like that, and just do a screenshot just to say that you're now a subscriber then I want you to post it in the thread below so every single post on there every single new person of new subscriber if you're a subscriber already just share it to your friends and put you a subscriber as long as you're looking at the videos then you'll be able to put it on my Facebook page um, it, the thread's below so you can see it all down there it'll be explained a little bit better and on the 1st of November what I'll do is I'll put the randomizer on and it'll pick up one lucky person who's going to win both of those alarms like say you get both, you get two alarms and you get both drop backs not only that but there's also some little extension parts if you use a pod as well which is really really clever I haven't got a pod to, to show them but there is another really clever uh, bit of thinking about by Paul so that's it that's all you've got to do I want you to share the video I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, let's spread the word it's all about good pike angling one last thought if you are thinking about going pike angling on your own um, and you don't know where to go with join your local PAC region there's loads and loads of regions out there they're, they're all over the UK all you've got to do is look on the website on uh, Pike Anglers Club of Great Britain's website and you'll see every single region in there if you're local to one of those give it one organise a call they'll invite you down to a meeting I think they're once every week if I'm not mistaken or once a month something like that I love I, I love my PAC meetings um, so yeah, get yourself along to one of those, you meet like-minded people, you better go along with them to fishings and they'll show you exactly what I've shown you today, but you can actually physically do it yourself rather than just looking at a video. I hope you enjoyed the video, tight lines and have a great season, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.